uh, this uh, week I learned uh, quite a lot about marketing so let's firstly will be on oh my nose um, what the fuck's the first week give me a sec give me a sec uh, let's say marketing segmentation I don't know how to spell segmentation okay so first of all or actually better yet is be a uh, customer create value for targeted customer okay so value for targeted customer okay so to in order to do that we need to first do market segmentation market seg segmentation right so what is market segmentation is you dive a div there you divide the market into a smaller segment uh, each with their own unique uh, characteristic and whatnot so that you can impose a different strategy uh, that you want to use right and the segmentation include uh, segmentation consumer market right the segmentation business market there's segmentation internal market and there's a requirement for effective segmentation that's that's all the different chapters so there are three different segmentation and we're gonna go to the first one which is the consumer market right segmentation from consumer market so in under here there is four uh main main segmentation okay there's geo uh geographic segmentation uh, there is the demographic segmentation. I'm a bit like sniffy nose, so that's why I feel a bit down. Uh, there is a psychologic, uh, psycho, psycho, not psycho, psycho, uh, graphic segmentation, and then there's behavioral segmentation. Right, so. Uh, we go through one by one. I need to sneeze. Hold on. So, be uh, geographic segmentation uh, divides the market into different geographic units such as nation. So, and two. Oh God, such as nation, uh, region, uh, states. Uh, country and what it's like basically anything positioning like uh, it went all the way down to like nearby neighborhood right that's all geographic segmentation and how this segmentation work is that so imagine like um, it trying to cater the product or service around the area so for example uh, McDonald Every country McDonald have their own unique specialty, right? In like, uh, for example, I'm just gonna copy this and showcase this. There we go. So as you can see, uh, this all McDonald. You can see in Korea, there's a South Korea, there's a honey for your uh, French fries. Uh, in China, there's like the I don't know, like a ink bun or something like that Germany you have like this uh, what, bacon sent uh, sausage burger India is like a box Philippines is like a pancake and what is Hungary and it's like what resin bun or what with omelet fish whatever basically it's all catered to around different culture and how uh, uh, for different uh, people that are in that region in that geographic region uh, familiar with right so for us Malaysian we actually have our own uh, special menu in McDonald it's a uh, nasi lemak we have nasi lemak McD uh, that's one of the, the, the prime example where our national is our national food yeah our national food is like nasi lemak right so they just transfer it and make a McD version up so that is a geography segmentation is like obviously uh, targeting uh, the, 
the, the, the area, right? Uh, next we have um. Ah, so God, I'm so dying. Why did I? Why do I? Ah, I like. I holding off on this this week alone for so long, but the moment I want to record it, I'm just dying. Uh, demographic segmentation. Okay, so demographic segmentation is divide the market into segment based on various such uh, as variables such as age, life cycle stage, gender, income, occupation, education, religion, ethnicity, and generation. So, is your demographic like your general as demographic? So again, okay, so it. Target your uh, gender, your age, your income, anything that you can easily categorize uh, a, a group uh, under demographic segmentation and you can obviously go in depth within those group and target even more specific like for example age what kind of age you are targeting? You know, maybe you want mainly target the age of like uh, younger children, so like maybe uh, stuff like seven to twelve. For example, let's say you make your Lego right. Your 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 head of the Lego de department is like okay, we're gonna market our Lego product, and we want to focus on young children. I think Lego is like three plus. As long as you're three plus, you're fine. Uh, it's like isn't it like three plus to ninety nine years old, <laughs> and then once you reach hundred, it's like a meme that say once you reach hundred, you just can't play Lego anymore or something like that. So there's a specific demographic. Uh, maybe they do not care about like your income. They do not care about your religion. But some people, some product maybe instead of targeting your age, some people can target your um, uh, oh my god, your specific occupation. So for example, maybe. Uh, what's the thing called the stereoscope? The thing the 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 doctor used the product to hear heartbeat, right? This one is mostly for uh people in the medical industry, right? So you try to uh maybe use medical term that only they them understand, or if you want to change it into want to pro, pro promote this as like something that everyday people can use, then you need to uh find a way to promote to let people know that oh this is not the medical uh, this is a medical equipment but you can use much more than whatever the fuck you will use otherwise because I don't think anyone outside of people wanting to check heartbeat uh, will have a reason to use this right so yeah that's why it's important to know your demographic who you want to target if you want to target like again okay, your general audience then you want to find a way to market this so that it's general audience know about this and want it for some reason okay otherwise you're most likely going to target like people in the medical industry or i don't know people what the what else can this use for at least this, this is the only thing i can think of right so yeah that's a uh, demographic segmentation next we have um psych psychographic uh, segmentation okay so psychographic segmentation is Divide sorry, psychographic. Uh, divide a market into different segments based on social class, lifestyle, or personality trait. So this one is more on your belief, as in like your how you uh, are, are, are living, how you act as a as a as a, as a, as a live a liver, living living person, right? So, because some people, uh, for example, being vegetarian or vegan, uh, unless you have such, such certain allergy, some people, uh, most people, are opt into those kind of group, right? Um, and so, when people that's in those group, obviously, are living in a different. Uh, style that people who are not in those not that differently about how they eat is different from people that is not vegetarian or vegan, right? So, if you want to target people that specifically for the vegetarian or vegan, then that is under uh, psychographic segmentation, um, where you want to give them information that they will like you know say like oh this hundred percent vegan friendly, or uh. For example, lifestyle, so maybe it's like 
gamer is a lifestyle so you can also under psychographic segmentation right so you can say okay all gamer listen up okay uh, we have a new stuff product with a new game out uh, buy our shit so that's also under psychographic segmentation um, basically how, how we try to live our life la. then we have behavior uh, behavior segmentation which is uh, based on consumer knowledge attitude use of product and res all response to product okay so uh, behavior segmentation will also uh, have a more sub uh, category and uh, those are occasion um, benefit slot um, sort user status we have use sage rate and lastly, we have loyalty status. Okay, so oh god, <sighs> what is occasion? Occasion, occasion segmentation. So under behavior, there's also sub segmentation. So occasion segment uh, segmentation is during occasion, right? So for example, maybe you want to promote more. Uh, more like uh, festive item during when the period of festive that festive happening right you want to pro where you maybe want to change your brand logo your uh, your style of your product uh, how you want to promote it uh, maybe it's like near Christmas is coming up so you want to put everything red and white and Christmassy and whatnot right so that's occasion uh, it doesn't even need to be holidays it could be like specific uh, season so like oh you know the raining season is coming up so you're going to promote uh, oh the raining season is here uh, time to buy your special limited umbrella that can shoot fire out there or something like that or it can be even more uh, more minute let's say it's a uh, school days right it's not really a specific point uh, they say the, that this is where uh, every school start but majority of the school start at a specific time right so you can promote that oh school day for most people welcome to back to school sales right so that's occasion uh, benefit sort refer to finding the major benefit people look for in a product class class uh, the kind of people who look for each benefit and the major brand that deliver each benefit so basically this person uh, what, what I actually don't get it benefit sort Oh god. Uh, finding the major benefits people uh, look for in a product class. The kind of people who look for each benefit and the major brand that deliver each benefit. I guess this guy just see that if your product is have very beneficial, it's like, oh wow, I'm going to use it, right? I think that's what he say. I actually have no idea what that means. I need to check back. Uh, user status um, also is a uh, 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 how behavior is, uh, behavior can act. So because maybe you want to promote something that is uh, meant for the first time user only, right? So you want to promote in a more uh, new friendly way so that you can attract new people coming into the market and whatnot. Or in other way around, you can uh, if you have selling a product is for the hardcore uh, people that already experience your product then you can uh, market in such a way right so that's that's your different segmentation on that also so you should use a status whether they are first time user long time user one time user or whatnot right and user rate is a uh, usage rate no user usage rate is also a thing that you should uh, able to track is that uh, how how often you your product is being used right if your product is like a one-time boom out and go then maybe you don't want to promote it in a way so that people thought it's gonna be a long-term thing right and 
if you know your product is used to be like a one-time thing, you can even in fact uh, lean on it and say, yo, we're just a quick and easy stuff, you use one and boom, get out, right? And other hand, maybe something like a more uh, high-end stuff, you want people to know that this is long-lasting. So I say, okay, this product can last forever and whatnot and whatnot, right? So that's a usage rate, okay? And lastly, we have loyalty. So loyalty uh, falls in three type. You have complete loyalty, uh, somewhat loyal, and no loyalty, right? So makes sense, right? People who is the most completely loyal will always buy from your brand for in, uh, in at at uh, at all <laughs> for for the first for the first one, right? Uh, if you have the product that they want. And they will just go straight to your brand first. Somewhat loyal is that they have two or three different brands and they might rotate out occasionally. Uh, they might stick to your brand and then like see how it goes and then occasionally move to the next one to try out different products somewhat, right? So it's like somewhat loyal, right? Um, and then no loyalty means that even though they did buy your product, at any point, they just can choose anyone else. Maybe they maybe just come in and just buy it, buy your product because they are their first time using it and whatnot. Um, so yeah, that's a three different lawyer, um, and knowing whether how often you guys have a lawyer loyalty is pretty uh, important for the business too. So like for example, company like Samsung or Apple uh, are banking on people that have loyalty, right? Because um, even though there's many other company that may have better uh, phone in terms of maybe different spec and whatnot, people still go to Apple or go to take Samsung for Android because they have loyalty to them already. Like for me, I'll probably still use, I'll definitely use Android, but I'll probably still continue uh, check out any what Samsung product they have. I haven't used, I haven't bought any, personally haven't bought any new phone for forever basically so yeah then that is uh, there's one more diff oh yeah one more thing obviously all of this can also be under multiple segmentation so basically mean um, you want so it's like because every time you segment, you try to narrow down your 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 scope. So multiple segmentation is you narrow down even narrower, right? So instead of like oh having doctor as your uh occupation segmentation, now you're having a doctor that is uh female that is also in a range of twenty to forty years old. Then that is like multiple segmentation that you're really holding in and you really were banking the fact that every person that is under that category will and need to buy your product, right? Uh, but because generally the uh, segmentation is technically like a good thing, right? You don't want to be as broad as, as general as possible because that means that you have to cater to every people's needs and if you try to cater to every people, you don't have your own personality in it, right? Uh, I'm, I'm talking about this like in terms of like gaming experience. Like if someone make a game that is like very generic, that is brought to everyone can you play. That is like no, not really their own identity or flavor to it, right? But if you, if the game have their own unique style, unique mechanic, very, uh, very, uh, very true to of themselves then that's, that's how people can that's how fan base are created right so i believe that makes sense in uh, any company marketing sense okay so all these are uh my consumer uh segmentation on consumer market right now we go on to uh, business side so we have a segmentation business marketing right so, why is this feel weird? Yeah, same in the business marketing. Okay, so consumer and business market uh, marketers use many of the same variable to segment their market. So basically, 
you want to market towards the business is generally the same thing as how you want to market towards a customer but with few additional uh, variable included right so the first one is customer operating characteristics correct correct customer operating uh, characteristic okay so and then I just list them out so purchase approach uh, situation factor situational factor and I don't know why I'm writing it down because no one can read it anyways I can't even read it myself but personal characteristic right so what if uh, my nose so okay this one is trying to um, market how the business how you how you want to act for your business so these all variables uh, is basically showcasing that oh if let's say you know this business have like uh, a lot of like um, school kids that always come to come to shop around here then maybe you want to uh, target your product to cater around them right and what not what sort right they didn't really put much note about business market but that's i believe that's what it means <sighs> i'm dying next we have a segmentation on international market uh, then here also i feel factor geographic location here we have um, economic factor i'm just gonna write short uh, political and legal factor and then we have cultural factor okay so same thing you want to go international you have to take note of the, all, all of this like how their location is you don't want to serve like uh, a very spicy food to a country that don't generally uh, able to tolerate spicy food um, as much uh, or maybe you could I mean, you could, and maybe you want to make your own special market in there. Um, but I like found almost certain flavoring might not be uh, well uh, received in other country and whatnot, right? Or certain product might be useless in some country and whatnot. So maybe like winter clothes is like useless in like country that's like in the middle of the equator that have like summer all year round, right? Uh, economic factor again how well the economy is and you don't want to go into a country uh, or like market into a country that's like the country is like dropping like downing <laughs> uh, it's like oh god this is probably not a good idea to uh, invest much in that country it's, it sounds bad but it's all marketing right you don't want to maybe maybe also it's a very uh, trying time uh, tr uh, very tough time for them uh, also in like a political and legal force factor um, where you maybe you don't want to introduce certain aspect that may trigger certain political uh, uh, people in that country so you you have to you have to take note of all this stuff before you want to go ship inter internationally right and cultural factor is also uh, it's mostly the same as geo uh, geographic factor is like how you how you uh, promote different culture right geography i guess geography is more like the terrain style right so like it's, it's how the terrain is maybe it's like hot summer so you don't uh, sell certain uh, wintery product and then your cultural means it's like the maybe certain flavor or certain um, looks on a product like your dress maybe certain dress look uh, might not be well uh, established or well uh, like in different um, international countries um, yeah so international segmentation involves forming segments from consumers who have similar needs and buying behavior even though they are located in different countries so requirement for effective segmentation it need to be measurable accessible substantial uh, differential 
and actionable. Okay, so measurable uh, is the size per uh, purchasing power and profile of the segment can be measured. Okay, so let's say you segmented a sec let's say you segmented a group. You want to measure how well the how much people is in that group, right? There's no point of segmented into a group that you found out that oh, there's only one person in that group. Unless that person is like the richest person alive, then there's no point, right? Substantial is that how profitable it is. Uh, if you do serve that uh, serve to that segment, right? Accessible is that how easily that segment able to access your product. Or how you can serve to those uh, segmented uh, consumer. Uh, different differentiator is that what makes your product different than everyone else. So maybe like there's like two person have selling the same product to the same segment uh, segmentation. So you want to make yourself a bit different so that people will come to you instead of the uh, your competitor, right? And actionable effective program can be designed or for attracting and serving the segment. You want to do some action promote it, market it, uh, advertise it so that people know that okay this is what you guys want right this is uh, what they can offer to the people and so buy this product something like that <sighs> and <clears throat> after we go segmenting everyone into different categories you know it's kind of odd because uh, last this way I learned is about uh, English com and I was talking about stereotyping and and the point of stereotyping is that you do not want to people people you don't want to put people into a category now we are trying to put people in the category to market that so it's like oh that is a bit awkward so anyways after you segment then now you have to do the shot you have to take the shot which is market targeting so market targeting you have to evaluate your market segment uh, in terms of their size, uh, their growth. Okay, you have to uh, check their structural attri attractiveness. Okay, you have to check their company objective and resources. Um, okay, resources. Okay, so. How do we uh, target a segment, right? A target, um, a target market is a set of buyer who share common needs or characteristics that the company decides to serve. So, market targeting strategies. There is uh, many difference. Okay, so there is at least here it categorizes four. Those four are uh, undifferentiated mass uh, or so undif differential slash uh, mass marketing okay mass can is either undifferential marketing or mass marketing then so this one is the most broad the biggest broad the broadest of all broad right then we're going to move on to more narrow so next one will be differential marketing or segmentation marketing so different or uh, more easily, you know, it's just segmentation, segmentation, marketing. Okay. Then even more broader is concentrated uh, marketing, or it can be also called as niche. And lastly, the most narrow of them all, micro marketing, or basically local or individual marketing. Okay. So. Let's go back to um, undifferentiated or mass marketing. So earlier I did say like, oh, you don't want to make it too broad so that everyone, so that you don't have a characteristic. That's only true if you want to sell your product uh, that every that people can choose not to have or people can choose differently, right? If you're choosing a product that's a need for everyone. Then why narrow down? Because everyone need it, right? Everyone, um, this is like, not everyone want to play a game, right? Not not everyone want to play a game. Not everyone want to play like action game, right? 
a game itself already have like so many different categories so that you can't really like make the game because if you make the game unless it's like the best game that somehow cater to every single uh, group of subgenre of game and it's so well that every people in those subgenre love it then you have the most winning profitable game of all time period but that's too that's that's there's so many different subgenre for it meanwhile uh, people want braid so you do not want to subgenre your fucking braid right there is a really subgenre like your flavor braid your how how like uh, what type of what type of weed you want to braid but people mainly you know mainly people just want braid braid so you just give them braid and if you market them as just braid braid then good enough you have braid braid another one is like mosquito spray okay mosquito spray people don't care well, some people care but majority of people just see that I need something to kill the mosquito that's it period they see the shelf of their grocery store or supermarket or convenience store they saw oh shit there's a spray and there's maybe a different uh, brand of it sure then they'll probably just see which one is the biggest which one is the longest lasting which one is the uh, cheapest and whatnot individual factor and they'll buy it right and because i will probably buy the cheapest or the most value uh brand there is right it doesn't matter whether it's a brand it's a local one no brand whatever as so as he can does his job i'm good enough so that's undifferential marketing okay next we have undifferential so mass marketing you want to target everyone okay differential marketing or now it's a segment marketing target several different market segments and design separate offer for each so uh, the, obviously the goal is to achieve higher sales and stronger position more expensive ter- uh, than undifferentiated marketing though because you need to cater towards uh, more specialized people and differentiated marketing with more than 30 differentiated hotel brand or uh, 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 this example they give so uh, the example they give is that okay and uh, there's so many hotel out there right so maybe you instead of uh, making a generic hotel maybe you make a hotel for specific people so maybe like this is a ladies hotel only or the males hotel only or a hotel that can only give to special needs people or something like that right so this segment that's how you target a segmentation of specific group and you market it or you serve it for those group only so that's a, a differential marketing right because some maybe even some people have different products so like i think before apple and android have different charging cable i think apple is just having a different charging cable in general then after i think now recently the new one they re uh no they certainly change not change they they are forced to change because i i don't know i don't i don't know anything about apple but this what i read from someone is that they're forced to change to the same similar type to every other phone because there's a law in the EU that has to standardize one type of cable now, and so that's why cable, uh, that's why Apple changed it. Uh, but before then, it, there's a difference, right? There's a the different cable. So there's a cable for this and a cable for Apple. There's a cable for Android or every other phone. And so when you when you a co- a, a independent company you want to sell let's say a charging cable then now you have to target you want to target for the apple group or you want to target for the drink i'm not sure apple group actually they do right it's just that there is not official apple charging cable is that you can still sell your external um uh, cable uh to people who do use iphone maybe it's like oh this cable is very long and whatnot right so yeah that's that um then we also have even narrow though which is the our uh, selecting that no sorry it's concentrated marketing right it's concentrated marketing uh, even more niche so like game i say game I, 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 I for some reason this make a lot of sense if i have to talk in game term uh game is game in general maybe it's a best marketing right then there's a different genre of game right there's a action game story game uh, rpg game and whatnot right 
then you have even more niche within those cat subcategories. Roguelike is a very niche game, right? Especially a like dungeon crawler roguelike from like for example Binding of Isaac is a very niche game. I'll be uh that, even though it's kind of popular if people because the game is out for so long, right? But people who actually play is kind of a, a, a niche group, right? Same goes to for people like playing I don't know Star Rail, even though in terms of gacha world Star Rail is actually the most popular. But imagine all the other niche gacha game out there. Like gacha maybe it's a it's a, a segmentation. Uh, marketing, right? It's a group. Then even more niche is the is the uh, what the gacha pair with, right? So I uh, there's like Star Real is a very well known because it's made from big uh, big company. Con- I think they are big, right? Miyoyo. But there's like way minor uh different uh, gacha that did not see much light of day, but they do well within their own comp- community, right? So that is uh, the idea of a uh, niche marketing. So it's like you want to cater towards particular set group of people within those people. So people, the, the example they give is like anime stuff, right? It makes sense. Anime, not er- everyone that watch anime love anime, right? Uh, but there's different anime they they like, right? And even in those anime or genre they like, maybe they like action anime, right? And in those and en- genre of anime, they could also like particular anime it in those genre genre so if you like rom-com doesn't mean that you like all rom-com you may like most rom-com and those most rom-com are now your niche right you need your niche in those rom-com and so like for me i love myself some kaguya sama love and love, love is war one of the best rom-com i have read no if i don't even read finished what i've watched i haven't watched the movie yet. i plan to walk come around to that but damn oh damn there's such a good anime and manga uh, and even though it's kind of popular again it's like quite popular but it's still con- con- under under the category of niche right it's only people who l- like anime rom-com and that anime specifically then there's a niche marketing right next we have uh mac my mac- micro marketing or local or individual so basically Local means that the people around there can only access it, right? It's either like the within like a city or neighborhood or even a particular store, like your local uh, restaurant. Only people within those vicinity able to access their restaurant. So that's a local marketing, right? Individual marketing is more towards high end stuff where your individual personalize your own stuff, tailor suit. Your car, your your car, custom made car, your custom made PC are all individual marketing stuff. Very simple stuff, okay. Uh, and then how to choose what um market strategy you want is that it depends on the company resource, product availability, product life cycle stage, market variable, variability, and computer marketing strategy, right? And now we're going on to the positioning and different center of your uh, different center and positioning. Okay, so your product needs to be positioned in a certain way, like not physically, but in the in the marketing way. Okay, so it's a way your product is defined by consumer on important attribute. So. What are those uh, positioning? So we plot them in the positioning map. So the pos- positioning map, positioning uh, map, is a map um, that shows customer perception of market brands versus competing product on importance uh, buying dimension. So for example, maybe it can be in terms of price and performance. So then there could be like a, a graph here they say oh this is a price and then maybe this is a performance of certain uh, of the product and then now you plot them on how how it is so like for example maybe company A have low price but maybe it's a bit uh low in performance maybe company B have high price high in performance and then it's like 
there's different people in different area and whatnot. Like see where so each product is where they stand. Okay, in the in the in the chart, right? So not necessarily all the time this is the best, even though it yes, generally in market sense that is the best, but maybe there's a some kind of flaw, some individual character characteristic that make it um not be the best and some maybe that's why people maybe brand loyalty make people choose the second one most instead of that uh, and whatnot right maybe it is objectively bad and that's the case maybe it is always the best right but that you still want to plot against uh, every other competitor in that field of whatnot so this is a positioning of the product in there Okay, so choosing choosing a different of and positioning strategy, identifying a set of possible competitive advantages should be a position. Choosing the right competitive advantages, selecting an overall positioning strategy, communicating and delivering the chosen position to the market. That's what I said. Okay, so competitive advantage is an advantage over a competitor gained by offering consumer greater value either through lower price or by providing more benefit or just higher uh, price, right? And Identifying a set of possible po uh, positive advantage to differentiate along the line so you can uh, have advantage in their product Obviously, you have advantage over their service, obviously You can also advantage to their channel uh, Oops Their people And the image Okay So, what does that mean? Product Surveys make sense, right? Channel, I think, uh, is your supplier or how uh, you get your own stuff, right? And maybe the supplier, your material itself, uh, people will view it differently depending on how it's sourced, right? Maybe if you people found out that you source uh, from stolen water, then people might not have buy from your product, right? That's also tied into your image, right? If you have better image compared to your competitor, then okay, nice. People will probably buy more on your side, right? Uh, and people, people itself is how I think it's believed like even the people that did buy your product, how they spread uh, their 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 knowledge to other people, right? So. For example, if people say that people realize that your product is good and they personally are able to share to everyone, then that's that's good for you, right? So you might want to find a way to have people do that uh, and make yourself uh, have a yeah that <laughs> uh, a competitive advantage should be and there's a few factor nope uh, importance this okay importance distinctive. Uh, superior communicative uh, communicative communicable sorry I can't speak uh, preemptive affordable and profitable okay this one actually can go one by one so importance is the difference deliver a highly valued benefit to target buyer What the fuck does that mean? <laughs> the difference deliver a highly valued benefit to target buyer. I guess how much difference is your product compared to the others, and is your difference is much more higher benefit beneficial than to the target to your buyer than the other competitor. I bring this thing. I think that's the one to say. But then it's distinctive. Distinctive is completely do not offer the difference. Or the company can offer it in a more distinctive way. So maybe the competitor is like maybe more general and you want to shoot distinctive light size yourself to make yourself look different, right? Superior is that um, your the difference is superior to any other product. So it's better. Okay. Uh, communicable is the difference in communicable and vis visible to buyer so how easily uh, if people are able to communicate with you so people, for example if you have an online shopping and you have a horrible customer service people might not want to buy from you hmm? 
uh, preemptive is computer cannot easily co copy the difference. So you maybe you make a new product, you, but don't want to make it such a minor difference that your competitor could do. So like oh your company, let's say a competitor sell a product at two ringgit, right? Or like ten ninety nine, then you sell your product at ten ninety eight. Hey, your computer is like, what the fuck is wrong with you? We're gonna sell you 10, 10, 97. So it's like, there's no difference, right? So, if you want to make a this differential, you want to do something that uh, uneasily copable, at least not as soon, or uh, not without involving, uh, investing a lot of resource also. Okay? And affordable, obviously, whether people can buy the difference of your product. So even though your product is better, maybe your uh, it's so much more pricier than it need to be, right? And is it profitable to your product up uh, to your point of minute? There's no point of making a product that's like so expensive, so high demanding, so um, uh, special, but no one uh, and you invest so much money into it, but no one or like the sales even go down. That's very bad. <laughs> so. Then we have to, this all ties into the positioning uh, or value proposition, right? Value proposition, you can view it in a 3x3 three three grid. Okay, uh, the benefit. Ban uh, oh my gosh, writing sideways is impossible. Ban uh, fit okay, better fit, and then you have your uh, price okay. So this is obviously low, this is high. So only product in this. Why the fuck is this happening? What? What the fuck did it? Uh -huh. Oh, it's here. It's not close. Okay. There we go. Only, only, com uh, only product that's in this uh, have a better uh, or have a winning value proposition. Right? And people that is in this category have a losing uh, value proposition. And, and this one is the most, this is neutral. What does it mean that is that it means that people who pay let's start the middle who people who pay a middle price will get middle benefit so that's like no point if people pay for a low price sorry wrong 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 way this is more this is less but this is uh less benefit and this is more benefit why is it labeled like this it's a good question Okay, good question. So, the I just following the slide. So the slide right like this. Okay, so it's basically less to more is here. Okay, so you pay for more, you pay for more here. Okay, for more here, but you get less benefit. So that makes no sense. Same thing here. You pay for more, but you get the same benefit as like other company that you can buy from that have lower have the the, the standard average price that have the same benefit. That doesn't make sense. The winning proposition will start at uh, also here doesn't make sense, right? You pay for the same price, but you get even less benefit than someone some other place. The winning proposition start at more for more. This will say as more for more. Okay, you pay for more, sure, but you should get more value in return. Yeah, you're willing to fork up the money and say yes, I want to get this extra feature, extra quality, and whatnot, extra benefit. Then we have uh, more, you have more benefit for the same. It's even better. You pay for even more product and now you only pay the same average uh, price point as what you have got normally, right? So the example for more for more is like Apple product or high-end car product, right? It's like really high-end, very expensive and so you people just buy for luxury itself. More for the same is that People want to have that kind of performance, but it's not considered as a luxury. They want to have that kind of performance, but in a more 
a reasonable sense way right you want to buy because you want to have the functionality not for the brand itself right you don't want to involve the brand brand cost in it so the more of the same will be that that will be that then we'll move on down to here first this is less for much less so you pay uh you get less benefit but what you paid uh is significantly less than the average cost right this is your typical dollar store like the pro the quality there is might not be high it might be you know very eh but it's a dollar right uh before inflation hits though so <laughs> same in here malaysia there is one i forgot what's the name um that's you sell very cheap but the product might not be uh, as high quality and whatnot but maybe you just want the item itself okay you don't really care uh the quality you just want to use it immediately right so that's a winning proposition then here uh, is a uh, more uh, sorry the same for the less so you get the same value as the normal average but you pay a bit less for it so this is more on like a grocery so instead you buy grocery from the wholesale food you get the same food right and but you pay a bit less because you buy from the wholesale and the most winning proposition is more for less you pay more so you pay less but you get way more benefit than everything else there's obviously the value for your buck it's like who wouldn't buy it right it's the best uh, proposition ever okay so but a lot of people want to do this but obviously you are offering a lot and it might in turn be neg uh, turn your business into a not a pro profitable business model because uh, how can you keep up with uh, such a low cost right unless you offer some external thing that don't involve money from your part but people find it extra beneficial that is a uh, more for less right so choosing a differentiator position a position statement summarize company or brand position using this form so you can okay so every company can say this right so to the target segmented and need our brand is the concept that point the difference okay what that means uh good question so choosing a positioning is often easier than implementing the positioning right establishing a position or changing one usually take a long time maintaining the position requires consistent performance and communication and uh, that is all for um, marketing segmentation targeting and positioning who we and that is like all like in one and a half week I have a lot more I need to go through oh dear lord oh dear me so there might be a second one quite soon um, yeah wow okay so thanks 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 I see all of them there we go all right